Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And this is going to be unboxing and rambling for Titans. And no coffee this time because, well, I had my coffee already. And much as it may not seem so, I only actually have coffee twice a two or three times a day, depending on the day. But more than that, more than that just seems too much. And it is still, still fairly early in the day, all things considered. So, what should we do first? Base game or extras? Let's do base game first. Now, this is Titans. Titans is a game you may not have heard of because it's not, it's not necessarily as popular as some of the titles that have hit Kickstarter whenever or whatever, but it is a game that you'll probably be seeing more of for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's landing now, so people are excited about it. Second of all, that name over there, Lukas Wozniak, I think that's how you say it. I think it's Lukas Wozniak, but that name is going to be for Go On Board. Go On Board is a company that has done They've done a few games. So Lucas has done some games outside of the company. He had one game. I can't remember what it was. I think it was just one, but it could be more. But past that, he has Valhalla. Valhalla was a card game, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know that much about it. So you know, let's show you this without the shrink on it. Da, da, da. Then they had Titans after Valhalla. Titans was on Kickstarter. If I'm not mistaken, made somewhere in the range of... I'm just doing this by memory. Uh, maybe a 200,000, something like that. I could be mistaken. It could be it could be more or less than that. I don't remember exactly. But Titans, Titans is going to be an area control game. Think Blood Rage or Cyclades or Kemet or all of that. Let's go through all this stuff over here. We got rule books. We'll go through the rule books shortly. We'll go through it all shortly. But effectively, Titans is, uh, like I said already, an area control style game, which means it's a very different thing than the card game. But more importantly, the reason Go On Board is a name that you might you know, recognize, so to speak, or see more of, is because there are currently 35,000 people, I think it's 35, it might have gone up since I last saw, 35,000 people currently signed up for the Witcher board game, which will be done by Go On Board. So their, you know, $300,000 Kickstarter, $200,000, whatever it was, it may have seemed like a decent amount, but it's going to pale in comparison to the, what, $5 million? that The Witcher makes. I mean, it depends on what the all-in pledge is, but think about it practically speaking. With 35,000 people signed up, let's give context here. For context, this is a nice board over here. Let's take a look at the board. It's kind of resting on too many things. Let's see. So you can kind of see. Let's just zoom out a bit so we can see the board. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know why I'm doing dun, dun, dun noises today, but we'll zoom back in just a drop. We'll keep the camera over there. This is a nice board. I like it. You know, we got a few things going on over here. Let's see anything on the other side. Yeah, we do have stuff on the other side. So, what's on the other side? Is it a different player count? I don't see anything offhand that seems to indicate player count. But, a rough look at the regions. Okay, and then if we flip it to the other side. Whoa. Whoop. That would be me hitting the camera. Apologies for that. Okay, it looks offhand like there's more territories. I could be mistaken. Not the camera, I hit the mic. But, either way, that's going to be the board over here. So, uh, The Witcher. The Witcher has, like I said already, 35,000-ish people signed up for it. Uh, Mon uh, Monster Hunter World, I think, had like 17,000 or 19,000 in that campaign. Granted, that campaign's all in is like $300. But, that campaign did 4 million, something like that. So, if you just extrapolate outwards, assuming they have an all-in in the $200 range, probably looking somewhere in the range of 5 to $6 million for this. This could be a big one. This could be one of those Kickstarter games that really takes off. Or it could be 35,000 people are somewhat interested in The Witcher, but aren't going to actually follow through. Titans, Kickstarter Deluxe Expansions. We have the King's Emissaries. We have the Spirit of War, and we have Titan's Power. Three different modules. Nope, Valhalla, Titan's Power. Ooh, Valhalla, you see. They, they managed to get their other game into the conversation. Past that, let's go ahead and take a look at the rules thing. So, we have Titan's Echoes of the Past. That's going to be a small expansion. We have the Mon... Let's just go ahead and flip through it quickly. So, Echoes of the Past gives you some other things over here. There was some sort of ghost thing. That's what it was. Fallen units. It's been a while since I backed this. I, I sometimes forget how campaigns worked back when I got This looks like it's only two pages because the rest is other languages. So, two pages. This had to do with fallen units and, like, you know, dead spirits or whatnot. So, Titan's Monuments is going to bring you... Well, probably, again, if I follow the same track record, we're going to have, like, two pages followed by the other rules. Yep, there we go. So, we got six pages officially. We got the Ottoman Empire. We have Kingdom of Sweden. Giving you a bunch of monuments for each of the various factions in the game. We have Banner of Glory. Now, remember this. This was brought into battle by GTA.com. That's a site that sells, like, CD keys or not. Seeing them in association with Go On Board was a little interesting. 
Banner of Glory. Your armies carry their banners to the front line, lifting people's spirits. Banners keep the morale up, but naturally opposing armies strive to take them down. And that looks like it's a single page. We got a single page of rules before we move to other languages. Then we have the solo mode, the solo mode, the nation, the na nation components explanation, and solo mode. That's what this rulebook goes over here. Ooh, that's fun. So we can see all the cards, the abilities can be used. If in the battle you have cavalry and your opponent has ar ar artillery, it can be used once per round. Card effect, roll one titan die and add it to your pool. These are very situational things. If you have cavalry and your opponent has infantry, I like that. Interesting. That's an interesting way of bringing tactical depth to the game of, you know, spearmen are better against horses and horses are better against the archers and all that. They have that through the simulation of, of cards that can be played under specific circumstances. The art in this game, by the way, is absolutely gorgeous. It, it, this is one that I backed this based on Sam Healy alone. It's all his fault if this game is not good. But he had the opportunity to play this at a con, and then from page 10 on was moved to solo mode. He had the opportunity to play this at a con, and he seemed to be really intrigued by the game. Which means Sam Healy, whose favorite game of all time is Blood Rage, and whose therefore I trust his opinion implicitly, well, I backed this game because he said it was, he seemed to think it, it was good or was excited by it. Keep in mind, I was paying attention regardless. It's not like everything Sam Healy gets am I, I'm interested in. In fact, I know for certain that there's a few games he likes that I don't like, but I was already interested in this game, so it already hit my interest level, and combined with his testimonial, that was enough for me. So one of those things is interesting. This is a good example of how to like filter through the top 100, top 1,000, or, or the top one game of all time. I remember when Twilight Struggle was the number one game of all time on Board Game Geek, and I like Twilight Struggle, don't get me wrong. But I would say, in general, when you are picking out a game, a good general rule of thumb is find something you are interested in that is rated highly. Interested in on its own, generally not good enough. Rated highly on its own, generally not good enough. It might be the best cooperative game in the world. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If the gameplay doesn't appeal to you, the ratings will only take you so far. So you want that combination. You want something that you are intrigued by, interested in, that you would otherwise buy back, whatever, and then combine that with people who seem to think well of it. So we have gameplay starts on page six. So if we ignore components and setup, gameplay starts on page six. And how many pages are there before we get to the end of the rules? It looks like we got a few pages. It's very graphic. It's graphic medium. It's not overly graphic heavy. I mean, I like graphic heavy. It just means the rules. Whoa, we got like three pages. Whoa, whoa, just tons of maps over here. So it looks like effectively, it looks like we have from page six through page 18 are going to be the core rules. That's 12 pages. Not bad, all things considered. I say all things considered a lot, but not bad. That is going to be, that's, I'm okay with that. Again, beautiful artwork, area control, powers, things, unique factions with different abilities. Again, been a while since I backed this one, so I don't remember all of the high points. Hot high points. So, we have these boxes, but we haven't actually forgotten about the Titans over here. So, this was a game that I didn't actually... I wasn't that interested in the miniatures, because the miniatures... If we can pull this off, is there anything underneath this? Oh, there is stuff. Whoa, there's stuff underneath this. Okay. The miniatures, if we can pull this off over here, uh, were fall into the category of the light, cheaper stuff that you expect to see. Things that aren't that exciting. Let's go over some of them. In fact, let's take the... Yeah, let's do the red ones. I can see some being better or worse, depending on the uh, color. I'm not a huge fan of colored miniatures. They... I'd rather have colored bases or something. It's, it's colored miniatures don't seem to do as good in terms of looking premium. So this is, I would say, exactly what I expected from these miniatures. Let's see if we can show it to you. This is exactly the quality I expected, meaning it looks fine. I'm not, like, impressed by them, but they're fine. And some of that's going to be the size, some of that's going to be the color. Colored miniatures, I think, in general, are fighting an uphill battle to look premium, to look better. So I'm not complaining about them, but they're also not miniatures that are making me go, ooh, ah, I want that game. So, yeah, that's going to be the miniatures. Uh, and, you know, we have some more over here. We have a nice little monument, a castle. So we could have that. There we go. A little focus. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Yeah. You know, fun little monuments and stuff. Fun little things. I like them. But that's not what... I'm not even going to bother showing you the yellow and green. If I'm not mistaken, actually, they actually are all different. They are all different. So maybe we will go through some of them. But we have the green ones, the cannon is basically similar, but, you know, slight differences. Again, just to show you a good example here, how they're different. You know, you can see the differences over here, just small different designs in the way they are done. And that's going to be true across the board for all the factions. Everyone's going to have different cannons, different infantry, different cavalry, different, uh, you know, artillery, and different castle. That's going to be all the stuff that goes on there. And then we also have these castles in here that I'll show you. These are going to be these over here. Yeah. Look at that star castle. That's a nice little castle over there. That actually is pretty nice. 
But yeah, we have a few of those. Those all look similar. And we're going to dump those into over here. Dump these guys back in here. And then proceed to move on to the actual miniatures that are interesting, which are the Titans. The game is, after all, called Titans. So hopefully those miniatures are better. Now keep in mind, some of my favorite games... Ooh, these are nice. Okay, let's take these all out. Move things to the side. Let's line these up for you. And then we'll just look at them one at a time. So uh, when you look at some of my favorite games... You know, in the area control genre, we have uh, we have Cthulhu. No, no, that's not that's not area control. Well, Cthulhu Wars. We have Cthulhu Wars. Not a fan of the miniatures there. Lots of people love the gobs of plastic. Speaking of gobs of plastic, look at this little lineup over here. So the gobs of plastic that come in Cthulhu Wars don't pull me in. Then we have Blood Rage. The miniatures there absolutely do pull me in. These Titans, by the way, the Titans are nice. I don't care at all for the other miniatures. The Titans are pretty solid. Yeah. And then we have Cyclades. Cyclades, I'm looking forward to the new one. My new one should be coming soon. But Cyclades is one that the miniatures were always okay, but they're fairly small. The monsters are cool. The irregular units are, you know, middling. Middling is a good word. Then we have um, Kemet. Kemet and Cyclades are going to fall in the same ballpark there. Inish is completely underwhelming. I mean, it's, it doesn't even count as miniatures. They're just a few guys. So, you know, Inish is meaningless. Uh, we have Chaos in the Old World, which is also going to be underwhelming as far as miniatures go, meaning as much as I love miniatures games, miniatures in my area control games have generally been what I would consider to be, well, underwhelming. They are okay at best. Uh, Blood Rage, again, is going to be the only real exception I can think of. Rising Sun would fall into that category as well. Let's go ahead and put these guys back. So yeah, miniatures are not something I need to be impressed by to like a game. They certainly are pretty to look at. They make for great unboxing videos, but they're just not necessary past that. Let's see what else we have in this box. So we have punch board. Okay, punch board and stuff. Let's go through stuff. So stuff is going to be, let's go through this. We have punch boards. We have our player boards. So you can see over here our player boards. You know, we got this faction over here. I'm just going to refer to them as this faction. The art, again, the art is gorgeous. I can't speak for the, the uh, miniature quality. I mean, I can speak for the miniature quality. I'm not overly impressed by it. We have a bunch of cards all nicely. I mean, these are nice little indicators of... Let's go ahead and open these up. So, we have B cards A. Let's go ahead and take this. Put this off over here. What are these cards? Because I have no idea what these cards are. We have... Ooh, look at these. Here, look at these cards. Again, the artwork's beautiful. Just... Amazing art for this game. I'm very, I'm very much pulled in by the art. I kind of, honestly, the art is so good. It kind of makes me want the miniatures to be better, uh, to to match the artwork, so that the whole experience feels premium, as opposed to some aspects of the experience feeling premium. That is some, like, I mean, look at these art. That's just very pretty. I would frame some of this stuff. Bodes well for The Witcher. I wonder who the artist the, is for this game. This like that Titan in the background. That is, that is intense. This is a nice, nice stuff over here. I'm okay with that. We have just tons of cards. We got some dice. In fact, I have some extra dice over here as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and lump my extra dice in there. Anything else interesting in here? Not particularly. Then we have punch boards. Punch boards for the various flags, the banners we are going to have. Let's put these, let's slot these back in here. So we have punch boards for that. We have these X's, these flags, these banners, these location tiles, which may or may not be... Hmm, I don't know if those are needed. I guess they're probably needed. I'm wondering if they're replaced by miniatures. And then we have those tokens over there. And that is going to represent our core box experience over here. Have to read the rules, but past reading the rules, it's, you know, intriguing. I, I'm, I like the miniatures. I like the titans, I mean, and the art across the board. Now it's just a question of whether the gameplay holds up to the experience I am looking for. Which the gameplay could be the worst, you know? That is how life works. Some Kickstarters are awesome. Others let you down. You never really know until you try. And also, it's going to be it's going to vary by person. The nice thing about games is for every game that you love, there are going to be games that... For every game you love, someone else hates it. And for every game you hate, there is someone out there that loves it. Which is always a fun part about games. So, and that, I say for every game, but there are some things that are close to universally hated. Some, some things. But past that. So this is Titans. This is Titans from Go On Board. The Witcher. So The Witcher is going to have solo slash co-op gameplay. It's launching, I think, May 26th, I want to say. Might be May 24th, but I'm pretty sure it's May 26th. And I will, well, well, if, uh, we'll see what happens there. I may or may not be covering I'm not sure. I'll definitely be talking about the Kickstarter. Okay, what do we have in here? This is going to be the Titans, the Reign of Fire. Exp Ooh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want these. I'm just, I'm just excited with these because, because I don't know about you, but way back in the day, I played Warhammer. Warhammer was a game that I played. Look at these guys. I, I don't know how well you can see them on that camera over there, but I'm going to go ahead and show you up there as well. So, 
over here, we got these gigantic guns, and the expansion is called Reign of Fire. Now, I played Warhammer back in the day, and I never actually played Warhammer. I, I, I collected Warhammer and painted Warhammer and built armies, but I was the Empire. It wasn't 40k, it was the Fantasy. And I was the Empire, and I loved my Steam Cannon. We had this gun called the Steam Cannon that was, you know, you can ratchet it every round and turn around and keep firing so you didn't really have a recharge round, so it was continuous fire mode or whatever it was. It was a cool weapon, in theory. Never got to use it. So maybe, maybe Titans will finally give me that uh, Steam Cannon experience with the Reign of Fire weapon gun situation thing. This is called the Titans the King's Miniature. Don't know what that is either, but King's Miniature can't be bad, right? Now, I do remember there being at least a fifth Titan, if I'm not mistaken. This is not opening. I don't want to tear it. I may end up tearing it. Oh, maybe this is the fifth Titan. Nope, this is not the fifth Titan. This is the King's Miniature. So, you know, we just got a King over here. Is it a first player marker? Is it something else? Don't remember at all. Don't remember in the slightest. Does it say? Let's find out if it says. It says on this thing over here, nothing, 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 nothing. It says nothing. First player marker, maybe, or not, who knows. So that's going to be uh, Steam Cannons and Reign of Fire. We have the Fallen Titan expansion. This is probably a Titan, I'd imagine, if it's called the Fallen Titan. I still think would hope it's a Titan. But yeah, so The Witcher is going to have solo slash co-op gameplay, which they announced. It's I'm excited for it. It looks cool. Here we have a Titan. This guy does look cool, let's be honest. Okay. If he will come out, he'll look cooler. Yeah, this is going to be over here. Look at that guy with his sword. I mean, these guys on the battlefield, that's going to be fun. I want to see these guys on the battlefield. That's where they are, really will be impressive compared to the other smaller folk in the battle. But The Witcher is going to have... So The Witcher has, has gameplay that is reminiscent to a degree of a game like Runebound, where you're going to be going on various little miniature offshoots, you're going on miniature explore, exploratory thingies, you will be tracking different creatures, you will uh, encounter them and fight them with either initiative or not initiative, I, I can't remember exactly how it worked, but there was something, I watched one of the gameplay videos with uh, him and his wife playing it, they look like they're having fun, it has story cards with a narrative aspect, so that hopefully will be interesting, what is this expansion, this is the Fields of Blood expansion, we got some dice, we got some some little swordsmen, and then we have cards, which I'm going to look at, because the last time I pulled out cards, the artwork was beautiful, and I'd like to do that again. Nothing personal. I don't know why I'm saying nothing personal, but let's see if I can open this, because I hate I hate those card things. You always got to like fiddle with it, and sometimes you have to end up uh, using your nail to scratch the edge of the card just a bit to get them off. Like They do a good job, but knives are better. So, we have this, we have cards big, and we're going to go ahead and go through the cards on camera. Just because, again, pretty cards... Although so far they're all the same kind of pretty. Oh look at that, more art. More art. So they reuse the art in the game, which I don't necessarily have a problem with inherently. It depends on how often, I mean this whole entire expansion has three pieces of art, which is less than I'd like, but I will live, I will live. It's, it's their own fault for having good art in the first place. If they didn't have good art, I wouldn't care when the art isn't, okay those are gonna, those are gonna be a problem. We're gonna punch that in. So yeah, so I'm curious. I'm curious. I've never actually played any games by Lucas, so I am I'm very curious and intrigued as to what they will be like. This is the fifth player expansion, so it's going to give you. I wonder if it gives you Titans. I don't know, but it's certainly going to give you another color because I mean I imagine right. It's a fifth player expansion. Again, box art beautiful. Same same problem I really have, which is just the art looks great. I want like a deluxified miniatures expansion pack. So what do we have here? We have the really oddly shaped rule book. I mean, this is a rule book that is on, honestly a little embarrassing in terms of, this is an annoying rule book. I am not a fan of that rule book, but we'll see how often I even reference it. We have the gorgeous art player board, player board over here. Yep. Then we have a Titan. Yes, we have a Titan. I'm excited. I wasn't sure. I, I can't remember. Keep in mind, it's been a while since I backed this and I don't, it also won't come out. Hopefully I don't break the Titans while showing you. But it's been a while since I backed this, so I don't remember everything. Honestly, not a huge fan of the Titan, but compared to the others, at least. The others just look cooler, but I'll still take it. And we have some, you know, dark... These guys actually look pretty cool. I like them. I like them. I'm going to show you them. Besides the fact that they are dark, which makes them a little more confusing with the gray, but they have a very, um... I can't think of the word I'm using, but they have a very knight kind of look to them. Look at that guy. I like him. I like him. He's cool. And then we have the horseman with his pistols. In fact, speaking of the Empire, one of my favorite units that I had were like, um, I mean, focus, focus. Yeah, one of my favorite units that I had was a bunch of armor, armored knights on horseback with guns. They were very cool. Not that I ever used them. So again, 
Maybe I will live vicariously through this game. Thank you, Go On Board, for letting me, letting me finally have my my Warhammer experience, just not with Warhammer. I'm not actually looking for a Warhammer experience anymore. I do have the, um, what's that Warhammer? Not Warhammer. They have the Games Workshop series of skirmish games. The Shade Spire thing. Okay, that's going to be all that. And then what is this? I don't remember what this is. Let's go ahead and find out. It Ooh, it's a playmat. Why did I get a playmat? They must have had an all-in pledge. They must have had an all-in pledge because I, there's no way I would otherwise get a playmat. Cue all the people who are like, they folded my playmat! It'll never come out! Um, I mean, I'm saying it dramatically, but I, I, I hear you. I do hear the complaints. Ooh. I think I'm just going to leave this in here because until I'm sure I want the game, I'm going to leave that in this box so I don't mess up whatever they have in case I need to reship it. I don't want to mess around with that. But that... That is going to be Titans. Titans is an area control game with, you know, miniatures and stuff and cannons and beautiful artwork from Go On Board that will very shortly have a $3 million plus Kickstarter. I think it's going to be much more than that, but I'm not certain, so I'd rather not say. $3 million. I'd be, I'd be very surprised if The Witcher does less than $3 million. 35,000 people currently following it. That is an insane number. Absolutely insane. Either way, I will see you there. But until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed the hope you hope, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video. That's what I say. I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, have a good one.